Fox Sports. We are We are Ohio. The Indians got a special effort from Scott Casimir last night, who shut out his former franchise behind 12 strikeouts. Another special K takes the bound for the tribe tonight as Corey Kluber will pitch for the first time since August 5th. The Indians will try to gain more ground on the wild card in grand style next on Sports Time Ohio. From Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland, it's Indians baseball tonight. The Tribe looks to keep their momentum rolling forward as they take on the New York Mets. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Tribe has won three straight four of their last five, and they'll turn to Corey Kluber tonight, who hasn't pitched in a month. And his last win came back in July against the Kansas City Royals. And what a start it was in his last start against the Tigers when he hurt his finger. He was on a roll. And the good thing about Clover, it seems like we've watched him grow this year. He seems to get better and better every start. I mean, he was working with all his pitches. He did hurt it on a curveball. So same thing as McAllister. Let's hope he comes back. We don't know how long he's going to pitch tonight, but hopefully he can be effective again. We'll be matched up against Jonathan Neat. Nice, the left-hander. He's 3-0 since the All-Star break, 6-6 six six on the season. Corey Kluber has pitched well at home this year. The Indians have won six of his last seven home starts. We'll see if the Tribe can get in the win column once again here tonight against the New York Mets. Kluber back in the rotation. That is a sight for sore eyes. He's pitched so well this year. Let's see if the Bats can give him some support. The play-by-play is next. And we welcome you into Progressive Field for tonight's game between the Tribe and the New York Mets. Indians have taken the field behind Corey Kluber, who makes his return to the mound 
almost one month to the day. August 5th, his last start. Today, September the 7th. And the Indians begin play just two games back in the wild card race now. As Tampa Bay lost again last night out in Seattle. So the Indians keeping the heat on as they continue to play well. They've won four of their last five. Let's take a look at Terry Collins' starting lineup for the Mets tonight. Eric Young, Jr., the leadoff man, followed by Daniel Murphy. Zach Lutz will DH and bat third. Lucas Duda hitting cleanup. Jacob Turner, who homered last night for the Mets, plating their only run, will bat fifth. Juan Lagares bat sixth. Matt Dendecker in center field, hitting seventh. Travis Darno will catch and hit eighth. And Omar Quintanilla, the shortstop, will bat ninth. Well, welcome back, Corey Kluber. Um, he's had a nice year this year, 7-5 and five and a 354 ERA. As you mentioned, Matt, a month ago, he had to leave a start against the Tigers where he pitched a gem. He went seven and third, six hits, did not allow a run, had six strikeouts and only one walk. That's where he hurt his finger. He is 2-0 and in interleague play this year with a 193 ERA, so this will be his third start. Let's hope it's as good as his first two. Let's set the defense behind Kluber tonight. It looks like this. Rayburn in left, Bourne in center, Stubbs in right. Avilas at third. Cabrera at short, Kipnis is at second, Swisher at first, and Gomes behind the plate. Jerry Mills will call the balls and strikes this evening. Paul Emmel at first, Chris Conroy at second. The crew chief, Gary Darling, down at third. Ready to go as Eric Young steps in for New York. Terry Francona said in Corey Kluber during his last side session or sim game, whatever you want to call it, he said he got stronger as that session went on. So doesn't seem to be any worries about, you know, his health, his stamina, where he's at right now, but he hasn't pitched in a month. So they're going to keep him around 75 to 80 pitches tonight. Well, we'll see if he has that curveball tonight. That's the one that he supposedly hurt the finger on. Well, I think the command is the one thing you want to be wary of when you've missed that much time can you command it can you be as sharp as he has been all season long swung on and missed nothing wrong with the fastball first two have been strikes and it's nothing into the count That one took off a little bit. One ball, two strikes. Ooh, that looked awfully good. Uh, That's that uh, reverse sinker or the comeback fastball that looked like it leaked back over the inside corner. Didn't get the call. I think he felt like he had a, a good pitch there. That's check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. And that ball did come back. And knowing him like we do, he can make that pitch to left-handers. Line drive single into center field. So Young gets a second chance. Takes advantage with a leadoff base hit. Then you go away with a four-seamer, and he stayed right on it. That comeback fastball was a pretty good pitch. Let's go downstairs to Katie Witham, who has more on Corey Kluber making his return to the rotation tonight. Well, Matt, you and Rick mentioned the question tonight is whether or not Corey Kluber will be able to command his curveball. That curveball is Kluber's go-to pitch. He told me when he needs a strikeout or a miss hit, that's the one he goes to. Now, he's only been able to throw it for the last week. That's three side sessions. But he said to get a good feel for that and to sharpen it back up, not only has he been throwing it in his side sessions, but he's also been throwing it just while playing catch. Well, something we'll definitely keep an eye on. All fastballs so far. There's a first pitch heater in yeah, for a strike I to Daniel Murphy. When McAllister came back, it took him a while to get a feel or, you know, for it. And he was uh, reluctant to throw it, I think, a lot. We'll see what Kluber does because Kluber's got other pitches. That cutter, I thought, personally was his go-to pitch, you know, when he needed to throw a strike. I thought he would go with the cutter, but if he says it's a curveball, Drew Stubbs will make the catch in right field. Murphy retired for out number one. Our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Get Kluber back in the mix. That's obviously very important. It's on everybody's mind as he starts here tonight. And early offense equals success. The Indians continue to play well when they get the early lead. That's something they did last night. 
and it propelled them to yet another win. They are 55 and 23 when they score first. Zach Lutz did not play last night. He'll DH and hit third here this evening. You know, the other thing with regards to the curveball, Rick, you wonder, too, if that's the pitch that you originally had the injury on. Is there something in the back of your mind that is, are you a little tentative because you don't yes. want to do that again? When it gets to game action, I bet you will be. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, if you're a player, an everyday player, and you're coming off a hamstring or something, you're a little reluctant to get out there and bust it all away. You know, you want to mm-hmm. ease into it. But baseball's a funny game. When Rayburn came back his first game, what happened? He had to, he got a base hit his first time up and had to run hard from home to second, and then the next guy gets a base hit. He's got to go hard at home, so he tested his leg and his, uh, his Achilles. Right back up the middle. Kipnis has it. Flips the sand. Oh, what a job by Cabrera. Double play. Are you kidding me? It looked like Kipnis had flipped it over the head of Cabrera. Somehow he snared it, came down on the bag to get the force, and still turned two. Take a look at Terry Francona's starting lineup for the Indians, brought to you by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. Michael Bourne will lead it off, scored a couple of runs last night. Nick Swisher, the grand slam, will hit second. Then Jason Kipnis, Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and his Drupal Cabrera in the middle. Then Ryan Rayburn, Mike Avilas, and Drew Stubbs. Seven right-handed bats in there for the Tribe tonight against the left-hander, Jonathan Neese. And a fastball in for strike. One ball, one strike. Fouled right back. Jonathan Neeson, Ohio product. He was drafted by the New York Mets, but he had a scholarship offer to go play collegiately at the University of Cincinnati. But it was a recruiting call from Gary Carter that swayed him and Prompted him to wind up signing on the dotted line with the Mets, and why not? He was born on the same day the Mets won the World Series in 1986. Yep. That's a pretty good selling point, huh? Yeah. It's meant to be, right? Yeah, I guess. Big kid. Fastball. Pretty good curveball, too. Full count to Michael Bourne. Well, he beat the Indians here on June 16th, 2010. Eight to four game. He pitched seven innings. Bourne lines one in the center field. It's a base hit. And Michael is aboard to start the ball game tonight for the Indians. 
Let's check out the Mets defense behind Nice. It's going to be young and left. DK here is uh, in center. Lagaris is in right. Turner at third. Quintanilla is at short. Murphy at second. Duda is at first. Dierno behind the plate. Nice this year in 19 starts, six and six, 366. He's pitched better in the second half. He's three and zero oh with a 214 earned run average, 81 strikeouts in his 110 innings. Born taken off on the first pitch, and he easily has the base stolen. Thought about maybe going to third, but he'll hold right there. His 22nd steal of the year. Now two behind Jason Kipnis for the team lead in steals. Well, Born wasted no time. He took off immediately. So he has a track record against Nice. Darno's throw, a one hopper that eluded Murphy. Swisher chops it foul. No balls, two strikes. Swisher turned a close game into a route last night with his grand slam. He said all I was trying to do was get at least one of those guys home and wound well, up getting all four of them in. That's the way it happens, man. Sometimes you just get your job done and good things happen. I mean, last night you're just looking, okay, sacrifice fly. They did it a couple times, but with that swing right there, that gave him four runs. That's the bonus. Nice delivers, and it's outside. Two balls, two strikes. Rip to left field. That's a base hit. That'll score Bourne. That'll go all the way to the wall. Bourne comes home. Swisher into second base with an RBI double. His 24th two bagger. RBI number 51 on the year. And the Indians take a one to nothing lead. Well, I'll tell you what. He put a nice swing on that ball. Looked like he caught a fastball and just laced it down the left field line. It goes down into the corner. It's going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Again. The Indians are going to score in the first inning at home. They did it last night. Bourne came around to score. He had a single. Swisher had a single. Well, tonight you get a single, a stolen base, and a double, which pays dividends, and the Indians on top, one nothing. Now up comes Jason Kipnis. And he's bunts. Well done. Nice fields it, throws to first, and they didn't get him. He came off the bag. Duda sliding into foul territory, apparently lifted his foot off the bag and never re-engaged. At least that's the call of Paul Emmel at first base. And the Indians have runners at the corners with nobody out. Much to the chagrin of Mets manager Terry Collins, who argues in vain. Let's well, take another was, look. Uh, you know, routine play. He doesn't rush anything. Nice does the right thing. He was never on the back. Oh, yeah, he was. If he, his toe came right across the top of it. Did he? Yeah, watch his front He's not foot. on the back. Watch, watch. Oh, he did get Are it. Are you Absolutely kidding me? Did. Absolutely did. That's a bad call. Indians catch a break. They call him safe, but he scraped that foot right across the top of the bag. It'll go as an error. It should be error umpire is what it should be, but the Indians catch a break. It's first and third, so it's sacrifice and an error. The errors on the pitcher? Okay. Wow, that's I don't know I don't know about that call. Throw was right there. Yeah, if anybody you have I mean replay shows his foot was on the bag, but if anybody has to get the error there, it would it's be first the first base. baseman. Sure.
Yeah, good second look. He clearly dragged that foot across the bag. But the Indians get the break. Can they take advantage of it now to open the game up early? Santana takes a strike. It's one and one. Santana last night had a sacrifice fly and an RBI single. Takes another strike here. He's down on the count. He doesn't like the call. Very productive swing of the bat from the right side of the plate with that 301 average. More RBIs, more power from the other side. Foul ball stayed behind the plate. Well, he's lucky there. Had to reach for that pitch, and it's an awful long swing. That thing had English on it, rolled backwards. Low throw to first. A little bit low. So Santana with a 2-2 count. Jan Gomes waiting on deck. He's been swinging the bat well. Santana just spoiling it to stay alive. Last night, the Indians got a sack fly from Santana to take a 1-0 lead in the first. And another sack fly in the second inning for Michael Bourne to make it a 2-0 lead. Well, he's uh, staying alive. He's falling off some pretty good pitches. And Nice has already fired 20 pitches without recording an out. Though he should have one. Loop toward fall. right center field, dropping. It's down. An RBI single for Carlos Santana as Swisher scores. And Kipnis, who got a great read on the ball, able to get the second base. 2 nothing Tribe, RBI number 63 for Santana. Yeah, you know, so far in this first inning, everything going the Tribe's way. And he put up an at-bat. He battled, he battled, he put one in play, and it falls. So Swisher able to score. Kipnis gets the second. Santana drives in his 63rd. It's a 2-0 Indians lead. And still nobody out in the inning. Jan Gomes steps in. Gomes has hit in six straight games. Nine hits in his last 22 at bats. And that, during that time, he's driven in five runs as well. Upstairs with it. One ball, one strike. There are Gomes' numbers during his hitting streak. He had a seven-game hitting streak earlier this year, back in May. That's his career best, looking to equal that with a hit at some point here tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch. There it is. Boy, oh, boy, that's a pretty swing. Coming around third. Stop sign for Kipnis. It was a one-hop seed to Ligaris, the right fielder. And the bases are loaded, still nobody out. Yeah, you're, you can't send anybody there, but, boy, I want to take another look at that swing. That was really 
Nice swing where he stayed on it. Look at the crouch. He gets that breaking ball away and let it track deep into the zone. And just, it's down. He loves the ball down. And he put a really good swing on that for a base hit to right now. The Indians with four hits in this inning. Gomes has a seven-game hitting streak. And now they got to get his dribble Cabrera going. Yes. Oh, for his last 16. But he steps in here with the bases loaded and nobody out. Dan Worth and the pitching coach obviously concerned as Nice is about to make his 25th pitch of the first inning. Fouled right back out of play. What's really striking about Cabrera's year is the fact that he's hit 278 on the road and just 194 here at home. Takes a strike, it's 0-2. The difference amounts to 15 hits. He's had 15 more hits on the road than he has had at home, and therein lies the difference in the batting average. Popped in the air, right field, probably not deep enough. No. Ladaris makes the catch. No, he has, has to hold. He has 12 assists out there in right field, so you're not going to test him there. That's the first out in the inning. Cabrera's woes continue, and up comes Ryan Rayburn as Nice gets his first out of the inning. It brings up Ryan Rayburn. Who all season long has been a very productive hitter. Rayburn two for five on the year with the bases loaded. Takes it outside. A couple of more would be beautiful here. Low and away. Two balls, no strikes. In his career, he's notched three grand slams on his belt. Takes a strike. Ripped into right field. That's a base hit. That'll go to the alley. All the way to the wall. Kipnis scores. Santana scores. Here comes Gomes. The throw goes to third. It's a three-run double for Ryan Rayburn and a 5-0 Indians lead in the first. Boy, oh boy. I'll tell you what. When Gomes and Rayburn play, <laughs> the Indians score. It's plain and simple. He puts a nice swing to go to right center field, and it gets by. It splits the outfielders, and it gets all the way to the wall, and they turn. Instead of throwing home, they threw to third base. I don't know if they would have really had a chance to get Gomes, but they certainly had a much better chance because Rayburn wasn't going anywhere. Murphy went right to third base. So you give Rayburn three RBIs, and it's a five-run first inning. Eighth game of the year with three runs batted in for Ryan Rayburn. Tied for the most on the team, and this is a guy who doesn't play every day. And not to mention he spent a he's had chunk some of time kind on of the year. DL. Yeah, he's had a, a very productive year when you look at his numbers all the way around. This is 199th double. at bat of the year. And his 46th RBI. Off the glove, but Rayburn holds at second. 15 homers and 46 ribbies and 200 at bats. That's getting it done. Mike Avilas takes up and away, 2 0. Oh. Corey Kluber. He's the. The beneficiary, he's got to love it. 
Avila's taking it in for a strike, two and one. Still only one out in the inning as Nice is about to make his 35th pitch. Here in the first. A one-hop smash off the glove of Murphy. He recovers and pulled him off the bag. Rayburn to third. Avila's aboard. We'll see how they score it. It was a hot smash. Still, I think it's got to be. They gave a hit. Okay. I thought once he recovered, he had plenty of time to make a good throw. I agree. I mean, the ball's right there. It is. Uh, it's not hit normally. It, it, it has a little hair on it, but the, the throw wildly pulls him off. He had to go down for it. It's a one-hopper. He's going to play it off to the side. It hits off his glove, and that's where the mistake was. If he makes the catch, he's out easily. But No doubt it was hit hard. Now the Indians... With a chance to continue to take advantage. First and third. Still only one out. Drew Stubbs, the ninth man to bat in the inning. And that's fouled on the right side. Bullpen activity for New York. Jonathan Neese came into this game with a 3-0 mark and a 2.14 ERA since he came off the DL on August the 11th. But the Indians have teed off on him in this first inning. And they've taken advantage of a couple of mistakes. One by the umpire, now one by the Mets themselves. Scott Atchison, the former Red Sox, getting loose. Two and one to count. Line to first, double play ends the inning. Tribe sends nine men to the plate here in the first inning. They score five and take the big early lead. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. Now introducing three exciting new quarter pounders. And by Kia. Five-nothing Indians, second inning. 
And for New York, Lucas Duda, Jacob Turner, Juan Lagares will be coming up. Corey Kluber got a double play to get out of the first inning, but it only took him nine pitches. His counterpart needed 39 pitches before the double play finally rescued John Neese. <laughs> out of play. One ball, one strike. Duda is a big guy at 6'4", 250 pounds. Breaking ball and a good one. There's a, is that the first curve he's thrown? I don't know if that was a curve. That might have been a cutter at around 90. It's 89, so that might have been the cutter. And then he also has the slider. That's a lock him up fastball right there. First K for Kluber, one down on the second. Watch the movement on this pitch coming back. He threw one earlier. He didn't get the call. This one has more of the plate, though. He started a little more on the inside part, and it runs over the middle of the plate. Now that umpire has a feel for it. And, it, you know, when you go out there as a catch, you got to tell him, hey, stay with this little two-seam fastball. We're going to throw inside. You'll see mm -hmm. it comes back over the plate just to give him a little heads up maybe. Justin Turner takes a strike. A little bit outside, one ball, one strike. Into the outside corner with that fastball, and it's one and two. Justin Turner was originally a seventh round pick of the Cincinnati Reds back in 06. After the 08 season, he was traded to Baltimore in the Ramon Hernandez deal. Flips that one into center field. At 83, that, that was, was probably breaking a breaking ball. ball. Yes, it was. Stat of the game brought to you by your Northern Ohio Buick dealers. In his six starts before he went on the DL, the shame of it was he only had one decision. Right. Despite a 198 well. earn run average. Now, the Indians were winning a lot of those games. Most of them, up until his last start here, they had won five straight starts that he had pitched here when he has a quality start. And I'll tell you what, it, it seems like he hasn't missed a beat. I mean, because the control's there. He's locating his fastball. He's, it seems like he's been throwing all of his pitches. Haven't really seen the change up yet. Juan Lagares has hit in a career best 11 straight games. And he's collected 16 hits during his 11-game streak. He's one shy of David Wright's season high for the Mets. Little tapper. Kluber jumps Just on it. one. Two down. Turner goes to second base. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. Let's go back to the first inning. One on, one out. What happens here? Well... Oh, Kipnis tried it. When he went to flip it, it got caught in the webbing of his glove. But Cabrera made a nice play to come up. And watch, he comes down on the bag. That toe hits second base. He gets it off. Nice play by Cabrera. He helped out Kipnis there. 
Very nicely done. Two down for Matt Dendecker. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Dan Decker was a fifth round pick three years ago out of Florida. All SEC selection for the Gators as a sophomore and a senior. Two balls and a strike. Luber checks the runner, the 2 1. Foul right back. Two balls and two strikes. Terry Francona's club out to the early 5 0 lead here tonight. Missed inside. Payoff pitch. In the air to center field, it will drop in front of Bourne. They're going to wave the runner around third. Turner coming home. Here's the throw. Not in time. Swisher couldn't get there to cut it off. I think he wanted to. But Bourne's throw was on the third base side of the mound, and Swisher just couldn't get to it. So Den Decker with the RBI single. He goes to second on the throw, and the Mets are on the board. Well, it goes with the full count. It goes with his cutter. That, to me, it was his bread and butter. When he needs a strike, that's what he goes to. And he lines it right into center field. He left that ball middle of the plate. Bourne comes in on the one hopper. It's a little offline. So on the throw, then Decker gets into scoring position. He moves to second base. So the Mets answer. They are on the board. It's a 5-1 to one game. Travis Darno, the Mets catcher. 0 for 3 last night. Belt high fastball for strike one. Inside, spun him out of the way. Darno's been involved in a couple of big trades already in his young career. After the 09 season, Toronto traded Roy Halladay to the Phillies. They got in exchange Kyle Drabick, Michael Taylor, and Travis Darno. And the Jays sent him to the Mets in the, along with John Buck for R.A. Dickey. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Full count. Mm -hmm. 
The payoff pitch. Well, Tapper, it stays fair. And the inning is over. Mets get on the board on the two out RBI single by Matt Dendecker. 5 1 Cleveland, middle of the second. <laughs> the video game that puts you in the owner suite is now available free on iPhone and iPad. You can build your stadium and make the uh, decisions to guide your team to the World Series. Download uh, MLB Ballpark Empire free today. Michael Bourne single stole a base and scored in the first for the Indians. And John Neese with a fastball for strike one. There are a lot of oddball things that happen in the game of baseball. But I don't know that I've ever heard a story quite like the one involving John Neese and his former teammate Carlos Beltran. <laughs> Beltran didn't like his nose. And he used to get on Neese about it. And eventually he offered to pay for him to get a nose job. As Bourne pops it up straight up on the infield. So Neese accepted the offer. Went to the doctors. Got some consult consultations. And eventually had the surgery. Rhinoplasty. Nose job. And... He said that the, the best thing that he didn't think about was that it improved his breathing. It actually right. helped him when it came to working out when he would do a lot of cardio because he was able to breathe a lot better. Yeah, good for him. And Beltran paid for it. He offered to pay for it. I don't know for sure if he ever ponied up. Oh, boy. As of 2012, he had not. <laughs> and now he's gone to another team, so he might have a tough time <laughs> tracking him down. Let's track him down, see if he's ever faced <laughs> Beltran this year. And if he's drilled him a couple of times, maybe we'll know. Pitch down low. Two balls, no strikes. Call to strike outside corner. There's a long drive to deep left field. Nick Swisher has left the yard onto the home run porch. Swisher's 17th home run of the year. 
makes it 6-1 to one Cleveland. A no doubt about it shot to deep left field. I'll tell you what, he, after that grand slam last night, the double today and now this home run. That's giving him some life. You know, Terry Francona said he thought the grand slam would help him relax a little bit. He said, I think he's been trying to do too much. He's been trying to hit too many home runs. And he said, maybe that will just get him to relax a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, he's relaxed. He, I mean, he got a nice pitch to hit, but he did something with it. Look at the nice swing. That one gets on the home run port. So he's had a grand slam, a double, an RBI double, and a solo shot in his last three at-bats. So I think he's relaxed. That's uh, number 17 for Swish. Up the middle, the second baseman, Murphy, throws out Kipnis. Two down here in the second inning. Hey, I did a quick, quick check. He Beltran did pay up. Oh, okay. The, the original story I had, he had good. not paid as of when that story was written, but Beltran did. Oh, good. He did pay up for John Neese's nose job. I mean, have you ever heard anything crazy no. like that? I, well, you know, when you get around baseball players, they spend so much time together. You're like brothers. It's family. <laughs> it's a nice brother right there paying for my nose job. A little bit inside. Chopped to short. Quintanilla waits back on it and throws him out. But Nick Swisher continues to swing a big bat for the Tribe. It's now 6-1 Cleveland. Six one, the Indians lead it as we go now to the third inning. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you, joined now by former Indians pitcher Chad OJ in town this weekend as far as the Indians uh, alumni ambassador program. And uh, I know it's always fun for you to come back. How about this time though? You come back and Jarrett Wright's here with you. Have you guys had a chance to reminisce? Yeah, we got a good chance to talk. And I was really surprised whenever he told me, he goes, I got four kids. Yeah. <laughs> I saw him down there yesterday. Yeah. Uh, you know, his wife was holding one in the front pack. There was three others sitting down there when he went out to throw out the first pitch. I said, boy, he got busy after yes, he got he out did. Here, didn't Yes, he, he did. And he looks like he can still play, too. I know. And he looked really good. Does a lot of surfing and. Well, well in stuff. California, they do that. Yeah. We don't do that no, down, no, no, no. down south. Do no, we? the 
get the alligators in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. you got to wrestle them. Got... <laughs> What's new with you? What's been keeping you busy? Same old, same old. I've been in, been in Baton Rouge, and it's been hot. This is a nice little reprieve um, with the weather. And I've been doing a landscaping and digging some holes here and there, <laughs> pointing and telling them what to do. Yeah, that's well, it's always nice to get back here, isn't it, during the baseball season? Oh, it season. always is, yeah. Do you have a chance to follow the tribe during the course of yeah, the year? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, I, you know, I played for Terry in Philadelphia when I left here in 99, and, man, when I saw he came here, I knew it was going to be a big difference. Yeah. So. What did you notice about him back then when he was really just starting out as a manager? You know, he hadn't changed much. He's probably gotten wiser, obviously, and he's got more experience. But he's the same guy he was back in 1999, and that's what, you know, that's a good thing. You know, it's not a bad thing when a guy is the same all the time. The players love playing with him. He's one of those managers back, you know, he had your back at all times. Well, if you can survive the media in Philadelphia – and you go to Boston, you can say, well, you, he survived it there for, what, seven years. Right. Uh, you got to be a better man for it right yes, there. Yes, definitely has some thick skin. Now, Philadelphia, I've always heard, we've been there for a couple of series, but never spent any extended time there. Everybody always says it's a different world. You know, the, the fans, the, the sports media, what are your recollections of that time in Philly? You want to know the truth? You yeah. Make oh, no, we, 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 <laughs> you want the unbiased truth, Chad OJ style. Uh, well, um, Hopefully there aren't any Philly fans listening. But, um, you know, this was the penthouse, and then I went to the outhouse. So Philly, I mean, the fans are passionate there, but it's almost like they would get off of work and come there to take their frustrations out on the ball team. (laughs) Yeah. And that was a big change, big difference. But they are passionate, and they are knowledgeable. And at the end of the year, I would put my jacket on and go to the bullpen and, and hide. Because and they still knew who I was and they were still yelling at me, but uh, no, it was it wasn't a bad place to play. It was just you know the stadium was old, the old veteran stadium. Yeah, well that was yeah. the tough place. The tough know. place to play. Um, the fans, not a lot of fans there. It's tough to play when you know you go from forty thousand to five thousand. It's a big difference. Well, you see, you were spoiled here because you were here yes. through the good years, yes. and then you go over there, and they were in their lean years. And, yes, you know, in that town, if you don't win, I it, mean, they have a tough. new ballpark now. They're sold out a lot of the times, right. and they, they put together. They've won the World Series under Charlie. So, right. I mean, now it's it's a fun place to go, at least and play there. Yes, uh, and I would imagine it's a little bit better to play oh, there. It's much different playing there now. Um, you know, I hated to see Charlie go, but I guess it ran its course and. As baseball does. I yes. mean, you know, when yes. you spend time in it, you can last so long, and, and then it's time it. to move on, you yep. know? The game tells you when you got to move on. No doubt. Here's some of Chad's numbers. Obviously, the 1997 World Series, 2-0, 154 ERA. One of three pitchers in Indians history with two or more wins in a World Series. And we can't forget the, the hits. The ribbies. <laughs> oh, sure, as pitchers. You know, we had a chance to, to go to Miami and play three-game series yep. here not too long ago. And they were sort of celebrating their uh, 2003 World Series, right? Right. right. Uh, when we were down there for the 10 years, but you know, you go back to '97. That's a, it, it. It flies by, doesn't it? It does Chad? fly by. You know, my kids now are 11 and 14, and it's where'd the time go? I know. I mean, you sit back here and, and you think of the glory days in the '90s when everything, two World Series, '95 and '97, and now you turn around and it's it, it happens quickly. Yes, it does. But we still have the memories. The people here still have the memories, and it's always nice to come and relive them, isn't it? Yep. I have a guy that works for me that's 73 years old, and that's what he tells me every day is we all we've got is our memories. Yeah. And that's, it's true. It's true. Nobody can take those from you. No, no, but they were some good ones, that's for sure. When you're in the middle of it and you're going through it and you're pitching in those World Series games and you're playing in those games, it's hard to sit back and reflect on them. Now that you've had time, what, what do, when you – when you allow yourself time to jog your memory and think back, what comes to mind first? You know, I, the camaraderie between the guys, I think that's the biggest thing. You know, the guys I played with, when you're going through it, you don't realize it until afterwards. You know, you, you look back and you go, wow. And, you know, I, I was sitting, my daughter is playing fast pitch softball now, and I come home one night and they broke out the 1997 tape, and they're watching it, and I'm like, oh, Okay. It's neat so to see. It was neat to see, and I actually sat down and watched it, which I'd never really had a chance to do. And I was like, man, that, that was cool. Yeah. And, and that, you know, you just don't realize it when you're doing it. We'll continue on with Chad OJ right after this brief break. The Indians on top, 6-1. to one.
progressive field. 6-1. Tribe on top going to the bottom of the third. It will be Jan Gomes as Dribble Cabrera and Ryan Rayburn do up. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you as always. We're visiting with Indians pitcher Chad OJ who is in town for the Indians alumni ambassador program. Having fun visiting with the fans. And that, that part of it probably never gets old because I'm sure when you're down in Louisiana, there are people who know who you are and know you pitch in the big leagues. But right. Probably don't have people lining up for your autograph. No, the not, time, not down there. You know, if you played at LSU, you're a big deal there. But they, yeah. have no, <laughs> yeah. they have no clue what you did afterwards. Only a few people do. But, you know, it's nice to get back here. It is nice to be recognized. It's nice to be seen. You know, as you get older, you really start to appreciate those things. And you understand that the fans are the reason why you're on the field. And, you know, they, they help pay your salary. Well, you, the, you understand that the fun part of it is is we get to, it's, it's like a high school reunion. Yes. Like when we have fantasy camp, you get back and you get different generations. You get to see guys and reminisce about everybody. That's the fun thing when you oh, do yeah. fantasy I love camp. That part. And at least when you come back and you see some other guys that you played with, you can go back in your own mind and have some fun. Yeah. Baseball is one of those one of those unique sports where it's a small community and, you know, people you run into people all the yeah. time and. You know, like I got to visit with Sandy earlier, right. you know, playing with him, and you know Sal down there. You know, it's it was awesome. You know, getting to see those guys, getting to see the clubhouse guys, Marty and Tony. Yeah. And um, what they know, do to you? They have uh, anything set up for you? No, they don't have anything set up. <laughs> I mean, you sure not? You better check all your luggage. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> They'll do something to you. I guarantee it. Those guys have more hey, power about, than anybody. Hey, how about Tony getting married this year oh. in the off season? How about that? How's that gonna work? Well, did you just announce that on uh, the network here? Well, we're gonna have to send you home and see if you get the same invitation <laughs> I get. <laughs> I think those guys might have more power than anybody in in the. They in very here. well could. <laughs> yes. Indirectly, yes. yes. Yes, or something else. Tony I mean, doesn't watch TV. He listens to radio. Yep. You know Check. what's funny is those guys were basically. College age teenagers. Whenever I was here, and now they're running the place. <laughs> well, <laughs> who'd, they, who'd, who'd they pay off? <laughs> what was the biggest adjustment that you had to make when your playing career was over? You know, adjusting to civilian life, as we as we say, it's tough. It's a lot tougher than people would understand. Um, you got to keep yourself busy. I was very fortunate in the fact that the day I retired, I enrolled in school. And I went back to school for four years, and that kept me busy. But there were days where it was just like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Because you were so regimented coming to the park at the same time and doing this on the same time. But that's, you know, it took me probably about a good three, four years to adjust back into a different lifestyle. And, um, you know, I kept myself busy, which was the biggest thing. And now that I own a business, it, it those things have helped me. You know, the baseball part of it and understanding you got to be here on time, you got to do this, you got to do things right. That's really helped me out. And, you know, I learned a lot of life lessons, I guess. I think the biggest thing, too, is when you get out, is accept the fact that you're done with baseball. Yes. There's no longer somebody there to say, hey, you need to be here, you got to right. go here. You have to do it on your own because no one's going to do it for you. Exactly. Exactly. It's Drupal Cabrera. Oh. And that's the way it's well, going for him right absolutely. now. Absolutely. That's the way, the story of his year. As a matter of fact, and let me tell you, it can happen, and it can stay. When he hits the ball on the nose, if it deflects off a glove, it goes to another defender. When you hit the ball down the line, instead of it being two inches fair, it's about four or five inches foul. Game and of inches. Yeah, it really is. And this this year, it's been the game of inches against Cabrera. So you just have to battle and hang in there and do the best you can, which he has, but it's a tough, it's a frustrating thing to do. That's like when you don't get those pitches that. Now, that are, now, yeah. now we saw one well, a play at first base, but when you're out there pitching, you get a guy struck out. Right. You make a pitch, strike three, and he says ball, and that guy gets an extra strike. <laughs> you got to gather yourself That's out tough. there as a pitcher. Huh? How do you do that? You have to. You have to step back and you have to recollect your thoughts because that's a you know it's a shocker. You know you got the guy struck out. And yeah. Then all of a sudden now I got to throw the guy another pitch. And if you think about it, you're going to hang that sucker up there. And then I'll, let's say he comes back on the next pitch and gets a base hit. We saw it in the uh, with Kluber in the mm-hmm. first inning. That happens, and that's that's you got to you got to have a short memory, short term yeah, memory, real, short. real quick. Or sh- yeah, you don't have a short fuse, or you right. wouldn't be in the game long. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever run you from a game? I never got run from a game. 
I, I wasn't much on. You were laid back, though. I was laid back. I wasn't much on, you know, I wasn't much on doing, you know, hollering at anybody right. or saying anything. Just right. keep my mouth shut and pitch. Stay in your own little world. And right, right. Well, when you guys were in that World Series in 97, your mindset probably is, okay, we're here. Devastating that you didn't win, but you're probably in, you're probably thinking, I'll be back. Yeah, we, I mean, it, I really thought we were going to be back the next year, and we just it just didn't happen in in '98. And you know, Baltimore had gotten hot that year, knocked us out of the playoffs, and it was it was over with. You know, the run was over with, and I got traded after that year, and it, I was like, oh, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. Right, it never was the same. I mean, you're drafted by the Angels. I was trying to tell Matt. Hopefully, I know there's two outs. Tell them what it feels like when you're traded for the first time from the team that drafted you. Oh, it's you. tough. It's tough because, you know, you know everybody in the organization. I was in the organization from 92 to 98. And, you know, that's that's tough when you go from your first team to another one. Now, when you get released from the next one, it's not that big a deal. But, you know, that's a, that's a tough situation because it's like home for you. Well, we'll never release you. Oh, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> Although that. Although we will release you <laughs> from your duties here tonight. All right. Thanks, you guys. You can go back and say <laughs> hi to everybody. Right, thanks, thanks, Chad. Thank you. Right there. <laughs> you can do it every way. You can talk back or you can cough. Welcome back here to Progressive Field. Tribe on top 6-1 to one as we go to the fourth inning. Lucas Duda, Justin Turner, and Juan Lagares will bat for the Mets. Corey Kluber on the hill. We're joined by former Indians pitcher Jarrett Wright. Great to have you back. How you Thank doing? Thank you. It's It's been amazing. This is great up here. Super. You came in from uh, L.A. Where you Southern live? Cal, right yeah, Southern San Clemente. Cal. Yeah, I put my surfboard up and I said, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to bring the family out here and Good for raise you. heck for a little bit. So you had to charter a whole plane, man. You <laughs> yeah. got four kids now? Yeah, I got I got four beautiful kids. Like I told Tom, that listen all the time. They don't do anything wrong. Are you sure? No, I'm just not Just like sure. you were when no. you were a kid? <laughs> we saw your two boys down on the field. I said, they look just like Jared. They're running into each other. They're hitting each other. I told them we were at the hotel. I'm like, hey, we're going to go watch BP over there. It's going to be awesome. Guys are going to be hitting homers. So, like, after five minutes, they're up there wrestling on the on the thing. And I'm like, okay, they're, they're over it. There's not a whole lot I can do here. <laughs> But I always listened. I never bucked the system. I never did anything. Oh, right? boy. That's true. Like father, like son. You'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll find out the hard I way. I figure if people know my dad, Clyde, I think I turned out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, What's keeping was... you busy these days? So Obviously the, ki the kids. Yeah, the, the kids. And, uh, you know, we're coaching Little League teams and flag football teams and just enjoying being a dad. I'm, I'm really loving it. I got the two older boys and I got two little girls that – you know, just melt me. I love it. Duda tried to check his swing, but he went too far. He strikes out for the second time tonight. One down here in the fourth inning. 
Well, you look like you're in great shape and you're having fun and uh, you, you look good. It's been a long time since, it I, has I know, been a long since time. I've seen you. And I've had uh, a bunch of people tell me, I mean, usually at home, just hanging out, taking the kids. I don't get dated very much. You're just kind of a dad hanging <laughs> yeah. out. But now I got, you know, I wasn't even born when you played and <laughs> I had a crush on you when I was 11. And, so, and it's just now I'm a little bit dated, but it's, it's amazing to be back. This is your first time back here in a while? So I played uh, with Baltimore. I came here and pitched uh, pitched here in 07 and then uh, hurt my shoulder again. And that was... In this in this park? Yeah. yeah. Did you really? And that was my last game. Wow. Because so this 07. was where you pitched your first game, wasn't it? Yeah. In the big leagues, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we played uh, Minnesota here. Yeah, I remember when you got called up. What, what a whirlwind that season had to be for you. I look back now, and I, I thought at the time, you know, everything's under control. It's not really moving that fast. But as you get older, you realize how, th- how fast things were moving and uh, how lucky I was to be a part of it. Well, you look at your postseason numbers, 3-0, 472. And, I mean, that had to be fun. You're coming up. You're just happy to be in the big leagues, right? And the next thing you know, you're 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 in the the postseason and then the World Series. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was something that you couldn't have dreamed of. I thought we were supposed to go to the World Series every year. I'm like, hey, this is my first yeah. year. We're going, and then uh, it, it's hard to get to. And the teams we had were, you know, there were some great players on yeah, there. Yeah, something and, special. And then playing here, selling it out, it was it was awesome to be a part of it. Corey Kluber delivers a called strike, and not not just rookie year, postseason, World Series, but starting Game, game Seven, seven yeah. of the World Series. And and I heard you telling Al the other day that when you were in the moment, you really weren't thinking about all of that. It, it wasn't. I wasn't thinking about that. It it happened so fast, and when you're young, you feel invincible. Your arm feels good every day. You're throwing as hard as you can. And, uh, you know, nerves when I was young didn't really, you know, come into play. As I got older and you dealt with shoulder problems and you knew you could, get, you know, get rocked a little bit, that's when the mental side came in and it, and it became a little bit harder. Oh, oh, to be 22, 23 again the rest of your life, huh? <laughs> Run through a brick wall for anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Swung on and missed. Kluber got him to chase. He strikes out the side here in the fourth. Jarrett Wright on cue, and Corey Kluber racks up three Ks. We'll continue on with the former Indians flamethrower when we come back. as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Tribot top six to one Mike Avilas Drew Stubbs Michael Bourne do up for Cleveland here in the fourth inning we're visiting with Jarrett Wright. Okay so you mentioned that you know when you come up at 21 you're a young kid you're sort of oblivious to all that's going on around you. Did you have a welcome to the big leagues moment where you said oh it's a little different up here. 
I actually did a funny story. My first start in uh, actually rookie ball was against the Twins organization. And I'd uh, given up a home run, and I got ragged by my own team <laughs> telling me, hey, it's not high school anymore. This is pro ball. Because you were number one pick, I bet. Yeah, yeah you yeah. get the, the and money, I, and those I, guys get all over you. I signed late, so they were uh, they were giving it to me. So I uh-huh. said, "Well, we got to put the next guy down." Then, <laughs> so uh, so we took care of that. I did that, and then uh, my first start up here, Ron Coomer hit me about that Hyundai sign out there, and Pat Mears was up next, and I figured, why not? <laughs> I did it so, that name all. So, so that's uh, that's actually the first start, and uh, you know, coming in that way, and that that I think too has a part to do with my old man. He was pretty hard nosed back then. <laughs> yeah, well, that was uh, respect. That, yeah, I mean, that's the game when your dad played. I know somebody takes you deep. That next guy pretty much automatically goes down, or at least they, make them uncomfortable. Know, they yeah. got they got to move their feet. A they got to lose their toehold, no doubt about yeah. it. Can't do that now. It doesn't seem that way. No, you throw inside now and you could be ejected, you know, at least warned after one pitch if they think it's intentional. But it's not like it used to be. Yeah. And and, and for me, it was, wasn't too intense. My command wasn't the greatest. <laughs> I, could, oh, I could throw it hard, but that's about it. I used to call that effectively wild. <laughs> Drew Stubbs going to move him over to third on the ground ball out. Avilas. 90 feet now, away now with Michael Bourne coming up. This is an interleague game. If I recall... Correctly, when we were in Houston, interleague, you're getting a start <laughs> and a chance to move a runner over from first base. Yes. And go on, tell us what happened. So uh, I squared around to bunt, and uh, it's so funny. I remember Chris Holt, who threw about 94 with the heavy sinker, uh, kind of ran into my hands and blew up my my finger on my yeah. hand, and that was my introduction. To it broke it, it, right? You fractured the finger. It it kind of blew out the back and stitches and stuff like that. Right. And the, the funny part about that, the next day I get to my locker and uh, I had hockey gloves in my locker that, <laughs> that I had to wear for a couple of days. But that was, that was pretty funny. Well, it was funny, but I remember people were so upset because you're thinking, interleague play, why does the American League have to let their pitchers hit? Because you go out there, they don't hit all year long, and you've got one of your main starters out there, and they, you, know, you bunt a ball yeah. off your finger, and there you go. How much time did you miss? Uh, Do you remember? A few weeks, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you were on the DL. But we're all such great hitters. You know that. Well, I know that. Yeah, I just <laughs> listened to all you say that. <laughs> now Michael Bourne strikes out. He was no match that time for John Neese. Two down here in the fourth. Greatest memory as a Cleveland Indian. Does, is there anyone that's, that stands out? You know, even driving in, I have so many great memories from being here and growing no, up. No here, one. Yeah, the, I mean, the World Series, obviously. But uh, just seeing all the guys who is, still work here and, and walking around in the clubhouse is phenomenal for me. Yeah. It's, it's been great. And then to bring my family here and meet those guys and, and see this side of what I did because they were, you know, I didn't have a few of them. But uh, even my oldest was very young. It, it's been phenomenal. Everybody's been great. Is it amazing when you think back on, especially that 97 team, just the talent that was on that club and how long some of those guys played, like Jim Tomey, Manny Ramirez? Yeah, I have, uh, you know, in my my little trophy room that's actually moved to the garage now. I, I used to have its own room, but it doesn't anymore. <laughs> Got to add on an addition to the house. Exactly. Man. Walking through the garage, I still have, you know, the lineup of my first start. And even, you know, looking at some of those names, it kind of freaks me out. The, the talent we uh, we had and the guys who were on that team were, you know, professional guys and, and amazing talents. Well, it's always fun to come back and reminisce. And we talked to Chad OJ about it. It had to be fun to see him. I'm sure you haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him in, the, in you know, years and years. It's been really good to spend these days with Chad, you know, catching up and seeing what he's doing and uh, seeing who he knows and talking to those guys. Well, one of these days we'll have to get you down to Florida or Arizona for um, fantasy camp. <laughs> for a week, if you can yeah, escape yeah. being Mister Mister Mom. I'm looking for things to do. I'll, <laughs> well, we can get I'll you be there for two there. weeks. I'll be there for the <laughs> just, week before stretching and getting ready. Just don't let him pitch. <laughs> yeah. We don't need oh, any fantasy no, no. campers need, going down. No, yes, we do. No. We need young arms. <laughs> just and if you guys get a hit, see you later. <laughs> just don't let me bunt. I'll pitch. Don't let me bunt. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, man. Great to catch Thank up you. with you.
Jared, Jared Wright, Wright with us. Tribe still on top, six to one. <laughs> The wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse. Rethink possible. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. All right, back here at Progressive Field. The Tribe in front 6-1. to one. Rolling on to the fifth inning. Corey Kluber will be facing the bottom third of the Mets lineup. Matt Dendecker. Travis Darno and Omar Quintanilla. Well, last inning, Kluber didn't mess around, did he? He threw 10 pitches, 10 strikes, and struck out the side while we were sitting up here talking with Jarrett. Yeah, boy, he was carving them up. Okay, so I got a little interesting, well, maybe not interesting, but a little side note. <laughs> maybe not interesting. Interesting's all the, the eye of the <laughs> beholder, right? Den Decker. Right. All right. Is it? Oh, did he lay into that one, Drew? Stubbs makes the catch. No, can't come up with it. And Den Decker will stop it first. And he's two for two on the night. Boy, he laid into that one. But go ahead. What was your... So his last name has the D-E-N. And right. you've got Darno, who's coming up now. He's got the D apostrophe. Den Decker, originally, because of his Dutch heritage, it's a it's a lowercase d, lowercase e, lowercase n. Okay. And then Decker. But when he was at the University of Florida, he thought it looked weird that he had three lowercase letters and then all capital letters for the a rest Decker. of his name. So he thought it looked weird. So he had them change it. So it's all caps. Okay. But Darno still has the... Well, Lowercase D he with the apostrophe. <laughs> he, he was concerned on how it looked. <laughs> so I don't like the way it looks. It looks weird to have these three little case letters. And well, then the rest of them are all caps. I so find that interesting. Darno has the lowercase D in the that apostrophe. That does look weird. It does look odd, doesn't it? Yeah. But Den Decker has all caps on What's the back of his jersey. What's even worse, or I, th I should say that's, uh, that's a little more unique, is that you have two guys in the same, same lineup team. back to back on the same team with that uh, uh -huh. scenario. Which you rarely, if ever, see. There's Den Decker with the all caps, but originally, on his jerseys when he was in college, it had lowercase D E N. I guess his parents allowed him to do I that. <laughs> the O2, low and away. Well, we've had guys change names. Uh, where were we when the pitcher we we faced him one time here? We went, was it L A or? Oh, it was in Oakland. Uh, Oakland, and a guy a changed his uh, first name. That's when I changed mine. Santiago Casilla. There was Casilla to Gutierrez, or uh, there was, and then the, and then uh, there was J C Gutierrez, is who it was. Oh, Juan Carlos. Yes. <laughs> he changed his name, so that that forced me to change mine that week. Five, 
Five strikeouts for Kluber as he takes care of Darno. One down in the fifth inning. Our Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. Since the All-Star break, the Royals and the Indians, 1-2 in earn run average. That gives you an idea of just how well this Indian staff has pitched. Well, we will see Kansas City coming in here on Monday for a three-game series. Yeah, Kansas City still very much alive. They took a thumping last night, though. They gave up 26 hits. Kipnis to Cabrera. Back to first. Double play. Second double play turn behind Kluber tonight. Middle of the fifth. 6-1 Indians. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com, how do the Buckeyes look in game two? From what I saw, pretty good. What's got Kazmir's secret weapon? And get social with Indians Game Connect. Complete coverage of all today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Buckeyes just have to hope that everything is okay with Braxton Miller. He left that game with an apparent leg injury. We do until we were just kind of watching it. We couldn't hear the sound of what they were saying, but didn't look real good when he left. Kenny Guyton, however, came in and played tremendous. Jason Kipnis fouls it back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Jam job by the mound. It's going to be interesting. Quintanilla. Safe at first. Kipnis just does beat it out for an infield single. I thought he would. That ball just wasn't hit hard enough. And at shortstop, you would have had to come up and, I mean, get it and get something on this throw quickly. And Quintanilla did a nice job. And he gets rid of it as quickly as he could. And it is bang, bang, and it goes Kipnis's way. He was a bang, bang play back in the first inning where he was given a sacrifice. The umpire called him safe when he was able to drag that foot across the top of the bag. The umpire didn't see it. So the error went to the pitcher there. Carlos Santana, big swing, and he hit the catcher again. again. Darno might beat him up at some point. I'll tell you what, he hit him three consecutive times last night. He's got to say something. This might turn into a hockey fight. I mean, look at look at the long thing, and he gets him on the mask again. That's the fourth time in two at bats that he lets go of the bat, and 
the extension on that swing just clips him. Line to short, caught, and double that's going to be a double play as Kipnis was running on the pitch. Two away. Our in-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Carlos Santana blooped an RBI single in to make it two to nothing, and then Ryan Rayburn clobbered a three-run bases clearing double. Nick Swisher, his second home run in as many games. Six one Indians. They blitzed him early. And Corey Kluber has made it stand up to this point. Jan Gomes singled and scored on the first fly to left. His last time up takes down low, ball one. Three balls, no strikes. Caught the corner at the knees. Good pitch. John Neese. 3 1 pitch fouled out of play. Tell you what, this guy showed me something here tonight. He had a 39 pitch first inning. Gave up five runs in that first. Had a bad call, bad play behind him defensively, but other than the Swisher home run in the second, he's pitched very well yeah. since then. And look at that 39. They never let him settle in. 39 pitch first. Jan Gomes draws the walk with two outs to keep the inning alive. Well, you can uh, bring your dog out to Progressive Field on Monday. It's the Indians' annual Puppy Palooza event. All vaccinated pets can enjoy the Indians' 705 game. It's against the Royals. Visit Indians.com. Puppy Palooza for tickets and all the details. That'll be Monday, Monday night. Cabrera bangs it foul. There's a long fly ball to left field. Back goes Young. On to the warning track, makes the catch. Five complete. It's the Indians six. The Mets one.
Time now for tonight's AT&T trivia question. Two players in Mets history have had two or more seasons of 50-plus stolen bases. Who are they? Hmm. We'll have the answer coming up later in the game. Eric Young, Jr., who has 35 steals on the year. Singled in the first inning, sacrifice bunt in the third. Off speed pitch, Kluber drops it in for a strike. Seventeen out of nineteen first pitch strikes for Corey Kluber, and if you didn't know it, right, it looks like he's never missed a start. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Matt. That he has been out there throwing strikes. He's pounded the strike zone with a lot of fastballs, but it's good to see him. I mean, out of his fifty nine pitches, forty four have been strikes. Gave up four hits first time through the lineup. Only one hit second time through. Well, Kluber, uh, that's a good pitch. That's that little cutter on the outside part of the plate that comes back. I, I like that pitch. I don't see why it was called a ball. Look at he's sitting off the plate. But boy, oh wow. boy, that's like a perfect pitch. So, that's a great 0-2 pitch. Second time tonight. That Young has appeared to be struck out but didn't get the call. Well, you know, you're not going to get every pitch when you go out there. But, I mean, for 0-2, that's a good pitch. You make good pitches. Sometimes you don't get them always called. But it was a quality pitch. Payoff pitch. Fouled back. Kluber takes a long look in. Now he's ready to pay off pitch. A little bit low. That's the first walk issued by Kluber tonight, tonight, and the Mets have their leadoff man aboard. Great clip of the game from last night, Scott Kazmir. Terry Collins, who watched him pitch when he was with Tampa, said it's the best I've ever seen him. Well, he couldn't be far off because he was dealing last night. He had a good fastball, a good changeup, and a good slider, and I think uh, Terry Francona is going to make a move here. Interesting. He had an 0-2, had him struck out, didn't get the call, and ended up walking him. But, you know, after making his first start, he says, I want to get him out on a positive note. Just 64 pitches on the night for Kluber. So a few shy of what they talked about letting him go here tonight. Left-hander Rich Hill, the today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. We'll be right back with the Indians on top 6-1. to one.
6-1 Indians here in the sixth inning. Mets have their leadoff man aboard. Left-handed hitting Daniel Murphy coming up. Left-hander Rich Hill on for the try. 57th appearance, 1-2, and 6-19 ERA. A very good first start back for Corey Klober. Throwing strikes, pounding the strike zone, five hits in his five-plus innings. I thought he threw the ball very well. Sure did. Nice to have him back. And I think the one reason Terry took him out there, why push him? He came back. He, he pitched very well. You know, let's see how he reacts tomorrow. And they've got a number of guys in that bullpen to get out. So it's not like you're, you're you know, you're going to put any. Yeah, the Indians have 21 yeah. pitchers on their current roster. Normally a roster is 25 men. They have 21 pitchers. Yeah, it's crazy. Swing and a miss. Ball and two strikes. Got a piece of that. I mean, just right off the end of the bat. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, a one batter appearance for Hill. You got the Pistano, on the right hander, and Haggett on the lefty. He might go to Pistano for Lutz and back to Haggett on for the left handed hitting Duda. 1 2 delivery. Strike three called. Murphy out looking. One down here in the sixth inning. Well, dotted the outside corner with a fastball. After he fouled off that breaking ball that was probably off the plate, he just hits the outside corner with a strike. Good fastball. He gives up on it, and it is called. So a strikeout for Rich Hill. And he's going to stay with Hill with the right-handed hitting Lutz coming up here. Outside ball one. Earlier today, New York got whipped again by Boston. So New York now a full game behind the Indians in the wild card standings and could fall further behind if the Indians go on to win tonight. Well, they had a former Indian. Um, David Huff got the start, David right? Huff for started, New York? Yeah, against the Boston Red Sox. and. Got hit around pretty well. Runner goes and a good jump. Gomes wouldn't have had a chance anyway. Young with the steal is 36th. He's in the scoring position with one out. You know, good base stealers, it doesn't matter if they get a lead. They're going to steal it with just pure speed and getting a jump, and he went on first movement. It was easy for him. So Gomes with no chance there. Currently third and in the National League. Having a great second half in that department. The key to stealing the base is getting on first. Breaking ball for a strike. Two and two. Yeah, you can't steal first, as they say, but for Eric Young, batting average 256.
more importantly for a guy like that on base percentage wise. Yeah, that's that's three eighteen. Get get on base if he can. Swung out and missed. They got Lutz to chase. Back to back strikeouts for Rich Hill. Two down here in the sixth inning. Injury report brought to you by Elk and Elk Serious Lawyers for Serious Injuries. Jacoby Ellsbury went back to uh, Boston for an exam on his right foot. That could be problematic because he's having a very good year for Boston. Well, they're cruising in that division, so there's time for him to maybe get healthy if it's not as serious. They've got a, what, a, at least a, a They're eight up eight right lead. now. And yeah. Tampa in action later tonight. They lost again. They've lost two straight. Indians will be rooting for Seattle once again here this evening. Inside ball one to Lucas Duda. Struck out both times against Corey Kluber tonight. One-zero pitch. Outside, he missed. And now he's three and zero on the left-handed hitting Duda. Baltimore eked out a 4-3 to win over the White Sox this afternoon. So the Indians and the O's neck and neck behind Tampa in that wild card race. Bullseye, 3-1. and one. Duda lays off. Ball four. Two on, two out. And Terry Francona will make his move now. Today's Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. We'll welcome back Vinny Pistano. He'll be coming on out of the Tribe's bullpen when we return. His first appearance since he was sent down to the minor leagues. Called back up when the rosters expanded here in September. And he'll be next for the Tribe when we return.
Guarantee yourself a uh, playoff ticket priority with a deposit on 2014 season tickets. Plus, season ticket holders also receive discounts on single game tickets and access to tribe rewards. Just visit Indians.com if you would like more details. Vinny Pistano. There are his numbers on the year. Over the last two seasons, there has been no more reliable reliever for the Indians than You're Pistano. Right. In 2011, he pitched in 67 games with a 2.32 ERA. Last year, he backed that up with 70 appearances and a 257 earn run average. This year, he says it's just been different. It's been a weird year, in his words. And Well, every player's entitled to that. You're not going to have the, the same type of year, year in and year out. They're, you're going to have off years or a down year. This may be his, but this is a bullpen that certainly needs Vinny Pistano if they're going to be successful. No doubt about it. Swung on and missed. I mean, how tough is this guy on right-handers when he's on his game? I mean, the, the ball explodes out of his hand. There's nothing better than a guy that you, you get off to a good start and you have maybe an off year and people don't expect you to do anything and you come back and get back to your old self. Pitch outside, a ball and two strikes. It's a humbling game, isn't it? Well, it, for all of us, whether you're a player or broadcaster, doesn't matter. It's if you're in baseball, game. somewhere along the line. It gets everybody. The minute you think you know what's going on. One ball, two strikes. Popped him up. Good off-speed pitch by Pistano. And Turner, lucky that got out of place, so he lives to see another pitch. I think for Pistano and... Now, look, to his credit, Vinny hasn't gone around and complained to the media about this or that or made excuses. He's manned up and said, look, I just I haven't gotten it done. And, you know, he's kind of gone to the hole. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm going to make the changes I need to make. But I, I, I go back to he's a, maybe another guy who did not benefit from the WBC. I'm not going to say it was the culprit, but he certainly did not benefit from that experience physically. There's a drive deep center field. Bourne looking up. It is off the wall, high off the fence. Young scores. Duda around third. He's coming home. Here's the throw, and he is safe barely. He scores standing. But Justin Turner with a two-out, two-run double for the Mets. And all of a sudden, they close the gap to 6-3. Tell you what, this kid Turner has some pop in his bat. He got that ball, and it goes off the left center field wall. So a two-out, two-run double, and that's a bad pitch. He elevated that fastball. He left it middle of the plate, and you pay for it. And right there, he had him down in the count. He just couldn't put him away, as you'll see the second run cross home plate. So it is now 6-3 ball game. Both the runs coming in were on via the walk. Now Juan Lagares. Looks at a ball outside. Lagar is coming in with a career-best 11-game hitting streak. So far tonight, a tapper back to the mound and a strikeout. One-on-one -on -one to count. Hit in the hole. Kipnis can't get to it. They're going to wave Turner home. Throw is a little bit offline, and Turner beats the tag. And now it's a two-run game as Lagaris extends his hitting streak to 12 games. And back-to-back, -back, two out RBI hits for the New York Mets, and they've scored three times here in the sixth yeah, inning. They certainly did. There's a slider. From Pistano, and this guy just stayed on it, goes the other way, and it gets it past Kipnis into right field. They're going to be aggressive and wave him home, and he comes in and beats the tag. 
So Turner slides in. That's the fourth run in the ball game, and Vinny Pastano is done on his two hitters. He gave up a double and a single, and that is going to do it. Left-hander Nick Hagedon coming on when we come back. Fox Sports 1 is available on all TV providers. Go to FoxSports1.com to find out what channel Fox Sports 1 is on in your area. Well, a new ball game here, 6-4. The Indians lead down to a couple of runs. As the Mets have rallied for three here in the sixth. Left-hander Nick Hagedon. 31st appearance of the year. Brian Shaw, right-hander, up in the tribe bullpen. Matt Den Decker, left-handed hitter, will be the batter here. Den Decker has hit the ball hard both times up tonight. He's two for two. The first run scored in the inning charge to Corey Kluber, the second to Rich Hill, the third to Vinny Pistano, and he's responsible for the runner at first base. Good fastball, and he threw it by him. 0 and 1. Well, the Mets able to do it with two outs. But anytime you give free bases in an inning, it finds a way to come back and bite you eventually. Yeah, the two walks both come around to score. But hanging on two quick strikes on Den Decker. Here's Corey Kluber. The 0-2. Wow. Any idea what was wrong with that? No. Let's take a look at it. I don't know. Yes, he thought it was high. Well, 
Runner goes. Swing and a miss. The inning is over. Hagedon gets the strikeout. But the Mets get three on the board. They close to within 6-4. Another dog night. Kansas City Royals will be in town. Log on to Indians.com and get your tickets. Ryan Rayburn will lead off the bottom of the six for the Indians. Low ball one. Rayburn a three run double in the first. Out on strikes his last time up. John Neese gave up five runs in the first inning. A solo homer in the second since then. Three shutout innings. He's at 95, 96 pitches now on the night. He walks Rayburn. The Indians have their leadoff man aboard. It's only his second walk today. Ryan Rayburn's going to be lifted for a pinch runner, but while that happens, in less than 250 at bats, Ryan Rayburn, Eric Chavez, Luke Scott have all been very productive for their clubs. Matt Carson has been sort of the designated pinch runner for Ryan Rayburn. Yeah, he goes or in Jason Kubel, right? Depending on who's in the ball game. Mike Avilas is two for two. He has singled and he has doubled. He was going to bunt the runner over, but he fouls it off. Avilas drives one to deep center. Den Decker on the move. He'll make the catch. And then Carson will retreat to first one away.
really struggled in that first inning when the Indians put five on the board, 39 pitches, and they had six hits in that inning. Yeah, he they, didn't walk anybody. Uh, no, he didn't walk anybody. They have three hits since that, although the second it was a solo home run by Swisher. They had the leadoff double by Avilas back in the fourth and the leadoff single by Kipnis in the fifth. But he got a double play ball in the fifth, so, you know, this guy hung in there. And, you know, has given his manager a chance. He didn't have to go start burning that bullpen in the first inning, even though he gave up five. You know, in the National League, if we were in their ballpark, he might already pinch hit for him. Yeah, good point. You know what I mean? Here, that's the difference in the American and the National League, where you can keep your pitcher out there. Because he doesn't have to go up and hit, and you don't have to try and score with him hitting. And see, this is where... The, the American League really never gets any kind of a benefit from the, the interleague play. The, the National League team can benefit in a scenario like this, but name me an op, a situation where the American League benefits from playing in the National League oh, park. Only if you have a pitcher that can hit, you know what I mean, or he may go deep or something like that. That's the only thing I could think of. Swung on and miss, but it's two and two. They don't take batting practice, and they don't, you know, they don't do that stuff that the National League mm-hmm. pitchers do every day before a game. Stubbs is out looking. Nice with his fourth strikeout of the night. Two down here in the sixth inning, and we'll go back to the Hyundai Studios for an in-game update with Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt, Rick, after last night's Tigers' big win, Kansas City, Detroit once again has the lead this evening. It's one nothing. Prince Fielder and RBI base hit here in the first inning. That's been it thus far. They're in the bottom of the third. Justin Verlander on the hill for the Tigers. Duffy's on the hill for the Royals. Man. All right. Thanks a lot, Al. Here's Michael Bourne. One for three on the night. Bourne singled, stole a base, and scored in the first. Since then, he's popped up, and he struck out in a key at bat in that fourth inning when Avilas had the leadoff double. He moved a third on a ground out, but then Stubbs struck out. He chased a couple of balls that might have been in the other batter's box from Nice. One ball, two strikes. Five years ago during spring training, Jonathan Neese just happened to be reading a book about Sandy Koufax. And then one of the guys in his organization arranged a meeting between the two of them, and he got to meet Sandy Koufax. And Koufax showed him his grip on the curveball, and Neese said it was actually very similar to the way I grip mine. It was a very good meeting between the two. And Jonathan Neese, impressive outside of that first inning here tonight, through six, 6-4 six, Cleveland.
Football is brought to you by Panini's with 18 locations in Northeast Ohio and by Levin. Beautiful night here at the ballpark as you get a look from our Panini cam brought to you by Panini's Bar and Grill. Indians are going to go to the bullpen. Brian Shaw. He will be the fifth Indians pitcher to work tonight. It'll be his 60th appearance on the season. He's 3-3 three and three with a 3.94 ERA, and he's got Travis Darno, Omar Quintanilla, and Eric Young due up for the Mets. Matt Carson stays in the ballgame in left field. And a fastball in there for strike one. I mentioned before the Indians have 21 pitchers on their current roster. Thanks to the expanded rosters here in the month of September and Mets manager Terry Collins was asked about all the arms the Indians have on their roster right now. He said they have more relievers than we have hitters. <laughs> That's true. High heater. He lays off one ball, two strikes. Left-hander Mark Zepchinski, right-hander Cody Allen up for the tribe pin. A 1-2 to Darno. Back out of play. Hit hard to third. Right there, Avilas. Throws him out, one down. All right, let's get the answer to the AT&T trivia question right now. The, the Mets base stealers, 50 or more. Two or more seasons. Yeah. I don't know. Jose Reyes and Mookie Wilson. Omar Quintanilla, one for two on the night. Swung on and missed. And the can helped him out there, huh? One ball, one strike. I was surprised the first you know, pitch wasn't called a strike. Watch this. They're sitting away. He throws this one down and in. I mean, wow. that wasn't even close, and he swung at it. You talk about helping him out. You take it instead of sitting in a 2-0 count. A little bit high. Two balls and a strike. Quintanilla. Banged into a double play that ended the fifth inning. One of two double plays the Mets have hit into tonight. Two balls, two strikes. Shaw ready with the 2-2. Two -two. And a bouncer towards second. Diving stop by Kipnis gets up, but he can't find the handle. 
And Kentania went into first with a head first slide. And he's aboard with a base hit here in the seventh inning. Well, Jason just, uh, he knew where the ball was, and then the second time he goes to pick it up, he, it's right on him. He sees it, picks it up, and he didn't pick it up. He dropped it, so that's what, uh, I still think he had a chance if he picks it up with the bare hand cleanly to get him at first base, but when that didn't happen, he was going to be safe. One on one out for Eric Young. He has singled and walked and scored a run. Nubs it foul. Broken bat bouncer towards second. Kipnis goes to second. They'll get the force there for out number two. And we'll go downstairs to Katie with them. Well, Matt, we're going to wrap up this series with the Mets tomorrow. Danny Salazar will be on the mound, and it's a perfect day to bring the whole family out. It's Key Bank Kids Fun Day tomorrow. Afterwards, the kids can run the bases. Sponsored by the Cleveland Clinic. You can get your tickets now at Indians.com. Matt Rick, back up to you guys. Thanks, Katie. With two down here in the seventh inning, Terry Francona is going to go back to his bullpen. He'll go to the left-hander, Mark Zepchinski, when we come back. Check out Fox Sports Live as Jay Onright, Dan O'Toole, Donovan McNabb, Gary Payton, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson bring you all you need to know about the world of sports. Fox Sports Live airs nightly on Fox Sports 1. Mark Zepchinski on here in the seventh inning with two down. 15th appearance since coming over to the Indians. And he'll be facing the left-handed hitting Daniel Murphy 0 for 3 on the night. Well, this is where it started back in the sixth inning where Rich Hill matched up with him. He was able to strike him out. So he's bringing in another lefty. In the dirt and a nice stop by Gomes. Over two against this left hander, Mark Zepchinski.
Right back to him. Zepchinski will flip it to first. The inning is over. Stretch time now here at Progressive Field with the Indians in front by a score of 6-4. to four. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. The Indians lead it six to four as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And Boston goes, Boston. New York goes to their bullpen for the first time tonight. And Nice, I'll tell you what, he showed me something today. After giving up five in the first, he ended up getting six innings and did a really, uh, uh, overall, a pretty nice job. Well, he gave up six hits in the first and only three the rest of the way. Scott Atchison, formerly of the Boston Red Sox, on the pitch now for the Mets. And Nick Swisher takes ball one outside. Swish two for three tonight. An RBI double in the first, a homer in the second. Outside again, 2-0. And the 2 1 is a little low. Three balls and a strike. When the Indians were cruising along at 6 to 1, you didn't think they'd need much more, but a couple of insurance runs wouldn't hurt now. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Last night, Nick Swisher with the bases loaded delivered in a big way. Oh, he sure did. One swing of the bat, four runs. That gave him eight on the night, and he comes back today. Gets himself a solo shot in the second inning for number 17. That gives the Indians three players now with 17 homers. Swisher Kipnis in Santana. Pitch outside, ball one. Kipnis a single and infield hustle single is last time up in the fifth inning. Paints the outside corner and it's one on one. Out of play.
Back to even, two balls, two strikes. Another double play ball here, potentially. Four, six, no, they pull him off the bag. And Duda's attempt at a swipe tag came up empty. So Kipnis aboard with one out here in the seventh. That was a long backhanded flip to Quintanilla where he had to grab the ball and then try and throw it. And he was offline. I mean, this is a double play ball. He gets it to him. It was a tough feed to begin with, but that's a double play that should be turned right there. Maybe he should have spun to, to flip that ball, but he felt Murphy felt he could give the long backhanded throw. It just didn't work out, and it wasn't a good feed. Carlos Santana one for three tonight. Last time up Santana hit a line drive with Kipnis running on the pitch that resulted in a double play. Santana's bloop hit in the first.